Hello YouTube, my name is Nathan and today I'm bringing you a build guide for my Sunder Slayer in the Harbinger Softcore League. Before we get into the guide, I want to mention that I did make this character on a very low budget. A total of 25 Chaos Orbs went into this character all in, including jewels, uh, gems I bought myself from Siosa in Act 3, so it was cheap. Being that it's late into the league, some of the items that I'm using are incredibly inexpensive and I'm taking advantage of that to bring to you an incredibly durable slayer that has fairly decent damage and the capability of taking on most endgame content. In this video you will see a complete guide on how to gear, determine step priority, and how to create a passive tree step by step. I will not be creating a how to level section of this guide because it's simple enough to cover in one sentence. Equip Sunder and the best two-handed axe you found. GG. Well played. That's it. That's how you level with Sunder. Alright, so let's get into it. Alrighty, so jumping straight into it. I'm going to be showing you guys some clips of me taking this character through some endgame content. First and foremost, we have the Minotaur. Next, Hydra, Phoenix, and then Chimera. All bosses were killed. Some of them were not deathless, however, if you did play well and knew the strategy, you could absolutely do it. So I'm going to jump right into the gearing. The first notable unique to talk about for this character is going to be the Bringer of Rain. We're using this because it's inexpensive and it allows you to link Sunder with melee physical damage, faster attacks, and blind. It also provides you a large amount of life, armor, evasion, and flat physical damage to attacks. When socketing Sunder into this item, consider linking it with Concentrated Effect, Ruthless, Bloodlust, or Multi-Strike, depending on if you're killing a boss or mapping. Moving on to the next few items, we have the Wings of Entropy, Unique Two-Handed Axe, and Rumi's Concoction. I'll be covering both of these items at the same time because I'm going to cover what it means to block. First, the Wings of Entropy offer you 8% additional block chance while dual wielding. Now this is a two-handed X, but it does count as dual wielding, which means a few things. We benefit from having the dual wielding bonus of 15% chance to block, and we also allow ourselves to scale damage on the skill tree efficiently because the duelist starting area is riddled with dual wield nodes. The Wings of Entropy will be socketed with Leap Slam, Fortify, Curse on Hit, and Punishment. So as you can see on the screen, I've taken this directly from the wiki. Blocking an attack prevents all damage and harmful effects, including status ailments. Reflected damage can be blocked, however blocking reflected damage will not trigger on block effects. This is great because it synergizes perfectly with the Slayer Ascendancy that reduces our reflected damage taken. On our gear, we get 29% chance to block. It's coming from the Bringer of Rain, which is 6%, Wings of Entropy, which is 15% from counting as dual wielding, plus an additional 8. 29 total, and when you throw in Rumi's Concoction, depending on your roll, it will skyrocket immensely. I would like to continue talking about defenses for a moment and highly suggest you pick up a pair of at series step boots. These cost me two fusings. They're pretty cheap. You can enchant them yourself when you get to Uber Lab. And inside them you should socket Arctic Armor, Hatred, Blood Rage, and Stone Golem. If you paid close enough attention you'd notice that the Bringer of Rain has both armor and flat evasion. So while the build scales both, it is important to have at series step in the boot slot to increase the effectiveness of your Stib Knight Flask, which will increase your evasion by 100% and drop a smoke cloud on use. The smoke cloud, if you're unfamiliar, will blind enemies that are standing within it, reducing their chance to hit you. The next layer of defense is Life Leech and Health Regeneration. The Carnage Heart Unique Amulet provides the necessary dexterity and intellect to maintain high level blue and green gems. It also works in conjunction with Endless Hunger and Brutal Fervor to increase your damage and effective life regeneration immensely. 
The last layer of defense is armor. The Bringer of Rain offers a fair amount of armor, but not enough to be significant on its own. This is why we choose to pick up a rare pair of gloves similar to what is shown on the screen. Please consider socketing Ancestral Warchief Totem, Melee Physical, Chance to Bleed, and Maim inside the gloves. The reason we use Chance to Bleed and Maim linked with Ancestral Warchief Totem is to increase our single target damage with Sunder. If you recall correctly, Sunder is linked with Bloodlust, which increases your damage against bleeding enemies. If you need help finding a pair of gloves, please look at the simple stat priority on the screen. It's important to get either Dex or Intellect here, so that way we can level up our blue and green gems in the future. For the ring slot, you'll notice I'm using an unset ring to socket my Enduring Cry. This is so that when I weapon swap, the Enduring Cry will stay on my skill bar and remain useful. I'll talk more about the weapon swap when I show this character inside Uberlab later in the video. There are not many stats to take into consideration on the ring slot, but keep in mind that you need to use these items as an opportunity to cap your elemental resistances and stack a little bit more life to beef up your character. If you can find a ring that meets the aforementioned requirements, then you should be looking for the added physical damage to attacks. You'll likely not find it in large quantities, but it will be able to boost your damage by at least a little bit. The rings on screen are examples of items that I personally bought for between 1 and 2 chaos. If you need help searching for a rare ring, please look at the stat priority on the screen. The belt slot will likely be the easiest to fill as there is a surplus of high life belts in the league. All you need here is a decent amount of life and high resistances. When purchasing jewels like the one shown on screen, you should keep your expectations fairly low. All you really need here is life and resistances to cap out and beef up your character. Given that life builds are meta at the moment, you may find it difficult to find these mods and damage at the same time. They will likely be too expensive for you to afford and quite frankly they're unnecessary unless you're going for Shaper kills or Uber at Siri. Speaking of damage and at Siri, here's a perfect time to tell you that the at Siri's Promise Flask is perfect for this character. It offers you a mild amount of chaos resistance which helps when mapping. It also gives you a fair amount of damage and leech. The best part about this flask is it costs virtually nothing later in the league. I'm sure if you ask somebody politely they would simply just give it to you. Since we're on the topic of flasks, now's a perfect time to mention that you could either run a Divine Light Flask or a Writhing Jar. Both are incredibly useful for different situations, one of which you will see later on when I run Uber Lab. The second to last topic this guide will cover is the newly introduced Pantheon system. The Pantheon system offers a variety of small bonuses to defense after you've unlocked the power. For more information on how to unlock powers, please visit the Path of Exile wiki, as I'm unable to cover such a large topic in this video. Pantheon powers are, by design, meant to be changed frequently to give your character an advantage when taking on any new or challenging content. In my opinion, for this character, the Soul of Solaris and Soul of Garu Khan are two of the most ambidextrous powers this build can equip. As shown on screen, the Soul of Solaris offers a variety of bonuses. While this character has the ability to shrug off most hits with the high chance to block and evade attacks, the Soul of Solaris gives us an opportunity to somewhat protect ourselves from any rogue crit that bypassed our defenses. Furthermore, the extra bonuses to physical damage reduction can be important when completing endgame content such as Uber Lab. Speaking of Uber Lab, if this is the character you decide to make in order to farm the Labyrinth, I would highly suggest using a weapon swap. Shown on screen, the Bright Beak, currently costing 1 Chaos Orb, increases your Leap Slam attack speed greatly. Use this in conjunction with the Prismatic Eclipse offhand weapon, and you will be Leap Slamming furiously through the Labyrinth. Just make sure that when you get to the boss, you do not forget to swap back to the Wings of Entropy to dish out the big deeps. The last and arguably most important item available for this character in Uberlab is the Writhing Jar. It's most useful directly before an Azaro fight because it allows you an opportunity to do the following. Generate Frenzy Charges with Blood Rage. Generate Endurance Charges with Enduring Cry. Apply a large amount of Life Leech to yourself to begin the fight with. And finally, Proc the Ascendancy node Headsman, which gives you 20% more damage to start the fight with. In the final section of the guide, I will be going over skill tree progression. As shown on screen, the order of Ascendancy progression that I chose for my character was Bane of Legends, Headsman, 
endless hunger, and finally brutal fervor. In this section of the guide, I will be going over how to create the skill tree step by step, point by point. But first, I want to let you know that I chose to help Oak the Bandit for life regeneration, physical damage reduction, and increased physical damage. So, on to the skill tree. How do we progress? You start off by taking some physical damage, some armor and life, master of the arena. You come to bravery for a little bit more life, and then some damage here for destroyer, attack speed, physical damage, and again, down through the life notes. The next step you can do is take Wrecking Ball. After you have completed 25 points invested into the tree, the next step is Rushing Resolute Technique. This is going to make your leveling experience much better. You'll be missing no attacks, so every hit is impactful. Once you've taken Resolute Techniques, you can make the decision whether or not you want more life to feel comfortable or more damage. Let's assume you want damage. You take these nodes right here. Cleaving. Now, you path through Barbarism. You take the two-handed damage nodes, Butchery, into the Marauder Life area. After you've taken these nodes, you travel up to the Templar area for a little bit more life. And Retribution. Now once you're at this point, it's time to start taking damage again. So what you can do is put three points into these nodes here. Take By the Blade. Also, you can take the Axe and Attack Speed nodes here, up to Slaughter. Now once you've done this, there's a few easy life nodes again. You take two points there, two points there, and then this is almost the skill tree done, right? The next step is traveling to Constitution and filling out these life notes here. Now once you've done this, you're at about level 65. This is important because it's about the level that you need to equip Wings of Entropy. So let's assume that you have these equipped now. It counts as dual wielding, so we come back here to the duelist area and take some dual wielding damage. You take two points there for Dervish, and then you come down here for dual wielding damage and attack speed, up until ambidexterity. Now once you're here, you're very close to taking these mana and leech notes. This will help you significantly with quality of life. And that's almost the whole skill tree. What we need to do now is fill out some quality of life features, such as a jewel socket here, endurance charges, some armor and evasion, more endurance charges and a jewel socket, and again, another jewel socket here. So this leaves us at level 85. The order of importance for taking jewel sockets or endurance charges does not really matter. It's up to you. If you have a good jewel socket, if you have a good jewel to put in the socket, it could be worth taking first instead of an endurance charge. But if you're anxious to get into the labyrinth, maybe an endurance charge would be better for you. So, YouTube. I would like to conclude that this Slayer is likely one of my favorite budget-friendly characters. By far. The goal for this character was to develop a way for new players to jump into the lab without breaking the bank, and I think I accomplished that. At least this late into the league, where some of the uniques are a little bit less expensive. Just remember, if you're running this character to farm lab, make sure you're leeching. Make sure you're leeching before you run through traps. You might die. So, you know, make sure to kill stuff and then run through the traps. You'll be good to go. Uh, also, keep the endurance charges up. And I know leap slamming may be a little bit tedious, but uh, once you get the hang of it, it will be pretty good. You know, swap to the Bright Beak and the Eclipse and you, you'll be slamming furiously. You'll be increasing your times by a lot. Another common question I'm asked is, can this character do full key runs? Absolutely it can. It can crush Argus. No problem. Did you see me tank in the Guardians? Yeah, it can kill Argus. Okay, at level 70. No big deal. Speaking of the Guardians, uh, I just tossed those clips in there kind of for like, you know, background video. Just something to watch while I'm uh, going over the boring stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, the Guardians were actually pretty easy on this character. Didn't I could probably do it without flasks, to be honest. They're just kind of there for utility. You know, pop them if you need them. No big deal. Um, so again, YouTube, thank you guys for watching the video. This is the first attempt I've made at editing in years. So I had to learn a whole new program to make this. I got Sony Vegas. Um, I spent, what, like six hours today learning how to use Sony Vegas to make you guys this uh, this video. So if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to uh, leave me a thumbs up. Makes me feel good at the end of the day. All right, that's all I need. That's all I want, you know? If you watch the video, that's all I, can, that's all I need is a thumbs up maybe. 
Uh, hopefully every everything was explained well enough in the guide. I tried to make it kind of easy, you know, like a picture book type deal. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I got. YouTube, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for your views. Thanks for your support. I hope you enjoy the build, and I'll see you next time.